No Time to Die. The new 007 movie. Bond 25. It's the 25th Bond movie. And I'm still excited for it. And I'm hearing all these things on the internet. People are saying, oh yeah, this is just going to go for that hashtag Me Too movement. We're just trying to rank in the female audience and feminist agenda that's going around in Hollywood. You know, you look at what happened with Star Wars and Kathleen Kennedy and all this stuff. Now, Barbara Broccoli and, and MGM, they're doing it now. They're doing it with Bond because, you know, he was known as a misogynist and, and we can't have that in, in our movies anymore. You know what? I don't pay attention to that, really. I mean, I notice it because I'm a Bond fan. So I'll see what the scoops are. But at the same time, I don't care because I just want to see a good movie. I don't care if Natasha Lynch is going to be the new 007. I don't care. Because guess what? 007 is a code name. And that can be passed on to anybody. Now, if they start calling her Jane Bond, then that's overkill. Don't do that. But if they call her 006, 007, that's fine with me because it's a code name. And then in continuity... Daniel Craig's Bond retired inspector. So it's like, well, we need a new 007. And she just got picked because I guess she's the deadliest assassin. So I hope in the movie they show her kicking some ass. In the trailers, we see her kicking some ass. And hopefully they illustrate that she is deadly, you know, she's sexy, and she can do it all, you know, like an equal to Bond. And we've had, we've had female characters like that before with Xena on the top. You know, we've had characters that could compete with Bond and they were female. So this is nothing new here. I don't know why people are freaking out. And then there's all this information about people reading the leaked script or something. And I'm not doing that. I don't want to be spoiled like that. I don't care about that. And then there are reports people are saying that Remy Malik is... is going to be revealed as, as Dr. No in the movie, and I hope they don't do that. I hope they don't do that, because they did that with Christoph Waltz. Christoph Waltz Inspector was disguised as Franz Oberhauser, and it was revealed later on, I think in a clunky way, where it's like, oh yeah, you were adopted, and my dad loved you more, and so I killed him. <laughs> And then you and then you got taken away, and then I became a villain, and so they tie Blofeld and, and Bond together, and he's like, you're talking to Ernst Stoffel Blofeld. It's just, it's, I didn't like the way that was executed. And then he's responsible for all of his pain, and it's like the ending was goofy. Like, Spectre, to me, is a visually impressive movie, but the, the narrative of the story is just all over the place, and the action scenes are boring. I just don't care about that movie. The only Bond film that I truly care about is Casino Royale. Skyfall is a good movie. But to me, it's like when, you, when I think about, let's say, Avengers Infinity War. I love that movie because it's dark. It's gritty. It has an interesting narrative. It's a race against the clock. I care about what's happening. I mean, the action sequences feel more than action sequences. I'm emotionally invested in these action sequences because I feel like there are real stakes. And then you look at Endgame, it's just like a reg. For me, it's just like, it's a good movie, but it's just not as hard hitting as Infinity War. And so that's how I look at Casino Royale and Skyfall. I'm like, Casino Royale, you watch that movie. You see Bond's face and all of these scars that follow him throughout the movie. And that's what's fantastic about that, is that you see Bond being gritty and he's going through all of these challenges. And you can literally see the scars on his face as the movie progresses. And that's what this shows here in No Time to Die. So I feel like they're bringing that element back. Because in Skyfall, I don't really think there are any scenes besides when he got shot. And it was for a story plot. You know, you take the bullet out so they can analyze it. But other than that, I didn't really... I think in Skyfall, he just really seemed like, oh, he's like, I'm clean, no bruises, you know, really, you know. But it had, I feel like Skyfall had a really good narrative, and the story was interesting, 
and there was you know good emotional character development in that and then on top of that it was a very beautiful looking movie probably one of the best looking bond movies ever made and with no time to die i feel like it's implementing the two styles it's going back to the roots of casino royale where daniel craig started where he's going on these missions and he's getting wrecked like you see in the bridge scene he's got all of this black tar on his face and his suit is being all worn out because he's getting in fights and all that so that looks great i'm glad they're going back to that and then and then it looks like it's going to the the essence of skyfall of having this large visual scope where everything is just lavish and beautiful. Because you look at the action scenes in the trailer, the shots don't look like Quantum of Solace, all shaky cam and quick edit and cuts. This looks like wide shot. You see everything that's happening. It's crisp. It's clean. This has a great cinematographer, Linus Sandgren, who did the cinematography for a beautiful looking movie called La La Land and another beautiful looking movie called First Man and he did another beautiful looking movie called American Hustle. So this guy, I feel like the visuals are in good hands. And as far as the, 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 as far as the directing goes, I think Kerry Fukunaga is a fantastic choice because when you look at his work, even though he hasn't directed a lot of stuff, it's mostly... TV shows like True Detective or Maniac and he has some other movies under his belt like I've seen Beast of No Nation I haven't seen his other movies which I will check out eventually before No Time to Die comes out he has his own sense of style and it seems like he's one of those directors that go for realism and so for me it feels like what he's going to do with this is ridiculous as Bond is as a character, you know, it's like the levels that Bond has been to, like going to space and all this craziness, it's ridiculous, you know, the gadgets and, and all this dumb stuff, you can say. You definitely have to come up with something that fans can enjoy, fans can either connect with or understand what's happening, have empathy, you know, for what's happening with the characters within the story. And I did a video a long time ago called the movie construction discussion about no time to die. And there was a quote that I took a video that I took from what Kerry Fukunaga said about action movies. And I agree with him. He says that he thinks the best action are movies that deal with the stakes of the character rather than just action and spectacle for the sake of it. And I agree with that. So with him saying that, I believe in him. I believe in his vision and what he wants. And from the trailers, it seems like it's going to have that hardcore aesthetic to it. It's going to be hard hitting. The action is crisp. Like you see one action scene in the trailer where the car f hits this log and it flips over Bond's head and Bond's shooting at it and it doesn't cut away you see everything that's probably green screen I don't know or it's probably real I can't really tell but it looks good because it, it it looks clean and crisp so the visuals you know this movie is going to be visually fantastic and especially if they mesh the two best Daniel Craig movies Casino Royale and Skyfall together you know bring that gritty aesthetic from Casino Royale into a lavish looking movie like Skyfall, you've got a winner on your hands. And with this cinematographer, Lennis Sandgren, I think we're in good hands. And then Hans Zimmer, as the composer. Honestly, I feel like right now Hans Zimmer is a cheat code. Hans Zimmer is a cheat code in Hollywood. He is like, because he just did Wonder Woman. And we, and, and we all know how that turned out. But the music's always fantastic. He did X-Men Dark Phoenix. We know how that turned out. But the music in there is awesome. So you know the music is going to kick ass. You know, because I feel I never really cared about music and movies, musical composers and scores until I watched The Dark Knight. But honestly, my mind was too young to understand. The first musical score I ever got into was The Fugitive with Harrison Ford. That score is amazing. 
But then as I got older and I really started to pay attention, The Dark Knight really ignited that fuse where I'm like, musical scores and movies are awesome. And Hans Zimmer, you can call him the goat right now in composing music for movies because he's everywhere. He's doing the new dude. The dude is everywhere. He's a hot commodity right now. Get that money. You know, do, do what you love. Get paid to do it. And but he honestly, he just feels like a cheat code. Like I hear Hans Zimmer is the composer. I'm like, yeah, uh, the music is going to be dope. But what about the story? You know what I'm saying? The music in movies to me can only enhance the narrative of the story if, if the narrative is already interesting. If the narrative is not interesting, the music can make the scene look good or sound good, but it's not going to get me emotionally invested fully, you know. But I feel like all of the technical aspects are going to be amazing. Visually, we got a great cinematographer. Visually, we got a great director. So I feel like the narrative is going to be cohesive. It's going to have a lot of emotional beats to it. And the action is going to have meaningful emotional layers to it. It's not just going to be explosions and gunfire and random stuff like Spectre, where it's just explosions and gunfire and it felt boring. I'm sorry. Hopefully this doesn't have that. I believe in these people here. I believe this movie. I'm not going to believe all that negative stuff. And the only thing that concerns me is all of the cooks in the kitchen as far as the writers go. I do feel a little concerned about that because, I mean, you look at movies like The Amazing Spider-Man 2. You see too many writers on the project. You start to become concerned because of all of these ideas, you know. But I think that's also a good thing, and it can benefit the movie because not every idea is a good idea. Like one person can write a, a story beat, and then they think it's good, and then they run it in the writer's room, and then the other writer's like, uh, I like it, but can you switch this up? And then you switch it up, and then you see it in, from a different perspective. So it's good to collaborate. Hopefully all of these people collaborated, and they agreed as a unit on the ideas in this movie. And then hopefully Kerry Fukunaga, you know, took those ideas and brought them to life in an in a in a impactful way. So I'm excited. I'm excited. Like I know visually it's gonna be great. Music is gonna be great, obviously. <laughs> and then I don't know about the performances though. We'll see. Cause the trailers don't really give too much away, which is what I like. I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know what it's about. Because I haven't read the script. I haven't learned about all of the spoilers and stuff. The only spoiler that I found online was what Safin, who is played by Remy Malik, I read about what he's supposedly doing. He's creating clones or something. And so he's making clones of people. And there's supposed to be a clone of Madison who is, I mean, Madeline Swan is supposed to be a clone of her that Bond's supposed to be protecting, but then I also heard he could be protecting, like, his daughter since he's been retired for so long. He has a child, which sounds interesting. It sounds, that adds way more emotional weight to it. And then another thing, with the lady who plays Madeline Swan, I heard on the internet that you know, because the final cut of the movie has been done. It has been supposed to come out, but it hasn't because of lots of things. And she saw a final cut of the movie, and she cried. That got my enthusiasm higher a little bit, but at the same time, she's an actor in Hollywood. This is a movie she stars in. Of course she's going to say good things about it. What do you think a person's... You know what? Like, I want to see a movie that's like a comedy on Hollywood where you got a, a person who is starring in a movie, but they think it's trash, and then they're doing interviews, and they're supposed to promote it, but they're like, no, this movie sucks. I just did it for a paycheck. Because you always usually get a lot of actors who come out later in life, and then they admit, like, the reason why they were in the movies they were in. I don't think someone's going to come out as they're promoting their movie and it's about to be released and they come out and say, nah, it's trash. I really didn't like it. <laughs> I don't think so. But I'm not, you know, I don't... She, could gen she can sincerely feel that way. And I hope she does. Because I'm really excited about this movie. It's supposedly Daniel Craig's final Bond movie. But 
Never Say Never or Never Say Never Again. I haven't seen that Bond movie, but I'm excited because it sounds like it's going to be good because of all of the elements and all of the cooks in the kitchen and all of the things at play here. I don't think this movie can lose, man. It just can't. It just can't lose. It can't. If this movie... If this movie, I'm so excited for this movie. It's my most anticipated movie of 2021 because I've been looking forward to this since forever. If this movie sucks, I'm going to be so disappointed. And this is Daniel Craig's final Bond movie. And Spectre was a bit of a letdown. And I was so excited for Spectre because I enjoyed Skyfall. Like, this is how I look. This is how I'm, I'm going to rank Daniel Craig's movies right now, Bond movies. It's Casino Royale's number one. Skyfall's number two. Number three, I got to give it up to Quantum of Solace because there are some awesome fight, fighting sequences in that movie. And I like the gritty aesthetic. I feel like it's a bit darker and more grittier than Casino Royale. But the narrative is just kind of, I don't know, not that interesting to me. And then, like, yeah, the choppy editing and all that stuff. But it has some hard-hitting action sequences in there. And, yeah, Spectre, the last one. And I don't know where we're going to place No Time to Die. I would love to place it either right next to Casino Royale. Like, I'm really hoping Daniel Craig gets to bow out gracefully with this, where it's like, this is a hard-hitting Bond movie, and all of the fans love it. You know, no mixed reviews, please. No mixed reviews, no negative reviews. Like, have, like, 90% on Rotten Tomatoes, at least 90%. And it's just all across the board. Everyone's like, this movie's fucking amazing the action sequences are amazing you know this this can turn carrie fukunaga into the next christopher nolan you know because like i feel that with christopher nolan once he did the dark knight that's when studios were like we'll give you the keys to the hollywood's everything you know he already was doing his own thing but then after the dark knight is like all bets are off do whatever you want you know i feel like if carrie fukunaga hits this right here man and this is a big hit man We'll see him everywhere. I have faith in this movie. I really hope it's good. I keep my fingers crossed. I'm really looking forward to it. But yeah, that's my thoughts and opinions on No Time to Die. I can't wait. Most anticipated movie of 2021. That's all I have to say.